Hey guys, just want to give a quick shout out to Bombus and Raycon for sponsoring this episode. We're definitely learning a lot. I mean, I used to do this all the time when I was in like middle school and high school making those silly videos in my room. Yeah, you're in your element. A little bit, but I'm rusty. I had to set up a camera and then kind of move me away from my camera as I'm running around just yelling that there's <laughs> bees. And I'm like, if there's people nearby, this is a problem because everyone else is gonna run too. I don't think I had a book that I read as a kid that that inspired me to be who I am today. I didn't ever apply any sort of like life lessons from Harry Potter into my life. Like I would never go like, ooh, what would Hermione do in this situation? I don't wear sweatpants or any sort of comfort clothing. Every other type of pants is like an aggressive assault on your waistline. And they're like, how long can you stand us digging in? <laughs> Oh, 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 if you welcome back to me and my boy Smosh Cast. It's me. I am a not a boy, and I'm with my three boys. Here's the Smosh Cast. Welcome. Yeah. So Presented by Smosh. Yeah. <laughs> From well, the makers of Smosh comes Hello Kitty, the Smosh edition. <laughs> uh, someone cut me off. I'm not ready to do, to do that yet. That I'm was not ready great. to be funny yet. No, no that was great. No, I just, I just, I'm not feeling it. Guys, we are back at it. Same, back on our bullshit. Same <laughs> in our rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually scared today because they're doing uh, road work. They're like repaving the streets in my in front of my place, and it's shaking my entire building. And I'm scared. We getting a free massage. What's it's so true. It's a free massage. Clothing. Free body massage. It's just usually my butt, you have though. to walk down a creepy alleyway for that, and then someone says, "Anyone want a massage?" And then you go, "Yes, I would." But then you have to go somewhere for that, and we're in quarantine, so yeah. yeah I can't so do you, that. you have the you had the massage brought to you. So what's That's the true. big D? You guys are right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be so ungrateful. Yeah, yeah. you ungrateful, ungrateful human. And also, you're gonna have a brand new spanking road outside, so that's pretty dope. You know, True. once we're actually able to like you know, travel and for search. next March. Yeah, boy, I'm just a selfish asshole, aren't I? You're, you're not. Gotta not just born. look at the bright side of things, Court. How are you guys doing? I'm doing awesome, man. I was just thinking about how much sleep I've been getting. Really? I'm getting so What's that much like? Sleep. Hi, baby hands. It's um, nice. What? It's really nice. Shane, what is going on? What's oh, that? oh, hi. Uh, yeah, I'm also doing good. I'm here. Um, I've just been doing a lot of like thinking, um, reading. It's it's been good, you know. Wait wow. a minute, Shane. You have two left hands. That's so weird. Whoa, that's gonna be. What? You got How did me. That happen? Say so that's gonna be a treat for the for the viewers when they see that Shane has tiny hands on. Uh. I just have little tiny hands. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, I think spending a lot of time by myself has had, I've, I've gone through some changes, mm. uh, particularly having little tiny hands. Um, it's not weird. Shane, honestly, what I thought was going on until a second ago when you explained is that your hands stayed normal. The rest of you grew and your apartment grew because it's that all is... a matter of perspective. I think we've all learned a little something today. Damien, you present a great point. Thank you. Damien, you know what this just reminded me of? You know what huh. I always forget about is big your hands? big hands. Me and my big hands. D I, I'm going to rewatch that sketch as soon as uh, So Random comes back to come. Oh, it's going to gonna be on Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Shane's show that we never shut the hell up about is on Wait, Disney it Plus. It really is. But that sketch, it's, I always forget about be, that yeah. sketch. We talk yeah. about Zombie Man and Mr. McNamara. Most of McNamara. stuff was very good and very forgettable. <laughs> 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 no. Sounds like my love life. Oh, right? Nice. I forgot wow. about that. <laughs> well, Shane, speaking of big changes, I'm just going to put myself on blast real quick. I'm blonde again. Wow. Oh, wow. Blonde Bort. Everything's yeah, Bort different back now. in the court. Spent yeah, too my... much time in the sun. So back, literally feels like I went back in time. How's, uh, what, what spurred that on? Did you need just like some kind of change while in quarantine or were you, have you been feeling this for a while? I was planning to go back to blonde after Australia, like as soon as we got back from Australia and then all this crazy wacko stuff happened. And then like my- Oh yeah, the germs. Keep yeah, going. the germs happened. And you did also need a change after Australia, after you broke up with that koala. Yeah, mm, that koala that's true. was too clingy. Too clingy yeah. and high all the time. Yeah, that you broke up with. 
when you found out that they eat their mom's poop at birth, you went, whoa. Huh. Yeah. I was like, uh, mm, no, thanks. no thanks. Icky, kooky. I, I really um, wanted to get my blue redone after Australia too. And uh, sadly that ain't happening for a while. But now more than anything, I just need a haircut. I'm getting all shaggy and you guys convinced me to do quarantine beard. So I'm doing yes. that too. And now I'm wearing like nice. this hippie ass uh, hoodie. And so I'm just like, hey guys, I'm doing fine in quarantine. Like I just feel like a mess. I got Not a pimple on my oh. forehead, my tummy hurts. Let's see what else. No, that's fine. No, you doing you the corn beard? Fine. You are. He's doing the quarantine beard. Yeah. Oh shoot. I don't know. Maybe, but also we are filming sketches every week, so it's like, yeah. how much do I really want to commit to that? Also, this is specifically the time where having a beard is less healthy due to COVID stuff. So it's like a little bit spitting in Ooh. nature's eye to be like, I'm gonna is grow that a beard. So it is. That actually makes a lot boy. of sense. Yeah, well, wasn't actually, your allergies staying in your mustache longer, Shane, or something? Yeah, my allergies huh? have been horrible. And it's because when I go to the park, I, I've been noticing as soon as I go to the park and sit down to like write or whatever, I start sneezing like mm. immediately. Whatever's in the trees right now is killing me. And I get home, I blow my nose, I feel sort of fine. But then throughout the day, I'm sneezing and stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's because it's in my facial hair. Mm. You, should um, stop, you should stop snarfing on those flowers. Out yeah, have you heart, thought about dude. that, Shane? Yeah, I need to stop snarfing on Quit those flowers. Quit huffing lilies, Shane. <laughs> yeah, I need to stop doing cocaine. Have you ever tried like a neti pot? Uh, I owned one for a second and I tried and I failed miserably. I don't know. That stuff kind of, it freaked me out a little bit. Because like, I, it's, cause it's I the started trippiest. doing it a little bit, but... Then I read this thing. It was like it was like you must use distilled water, not oh, yeah. from the tap. And I was like, "Oh, why is that?" And they're like, "Oh, because there could be this brain-eating amoeba in yep. untreated tap water, and it'll eat your brain." Yeah, you, and you I was gotta like, boil it and uh, boil all the badness out of it. See, that explains a lot. When I think about how many, <laughs> gross. When I think about how many people just like aren't that big on like hygiene stuff like don't wash certain things don't aren't like super meticulous about like with their hands and stuff and then i also know that like you're putting things inside your sinuses that could go to your brain i've seen a lot of people just sort of do it and they're like no it's fine i've never had a problem and i'm like yeah because you're still here but like <laughs> there are yeah. people who yeah. die I mean, doing the thing you're doing it's literally like 40 people that have died from it in all the time it's not Huge risk, but that's but also, also not the a fun risk. story. Don't put also the tap is... water in your brain. No, a neti yeah. pot is not a thing that I'm willing to die for. That's like, yeah. it's just not a process that I'm willing to. There's things that I'm willing to take risks on. If it's like, mm -hmm. oh, one person might have had a bad, I'd be like, okay, but a neti pot, I just don't care. It, it's yeah. also just trippy whether I'm using distilled water or not. Mm -hmm. it, just the fact that I'm having water go you pour up into my brain and out my one other nostril, nostril and then it comes out the other nostril for yeah. people that don't know what a oh, neti yeah. pot is you like tip your head sideways you pour water into this nose and then out of this nose the water comes out it's like what it actually the feels, body works that way once you get used to it it actually feels pretty damn good and at least it's both nose stuff like if you put it in your nose and it like shot out your ear like i'd get that that's weird but nose be Sounds nose, strong. you know? Do you ever feel like when you're drinking soup or eating that it goes, when you're chewing, it goes into your ears? Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, can we, can, we, can we start a separate, can we get a separate uh, pod really quick? I just need to talk to you. No, uh, that's me. illegal. I'm hosting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, which, speaking of which, I want to get into the, the reason we're doing this episode today. Oh, the reason why. <laughs> I begged and pleaded and threw a fit to have a, just a not an advice cast, but mm -hmm. a good old Q and A cast. I I emphasized on Twitter I wanted some show with no name vibes. I want I want the good old dummy dummy questions, the Qs, so we can give the dummy dummy A's. Um, so how do you guys feel about that? You guys ready for this? You want to? Is that the first Q? Dumb. Because no, my answer not. is who yes. said that question? <laughs> I feel. Good. Your boss, me, the host of the Me and My Boys cast. Whoa. Okay. Do you guys want to begin? Because some of these, I think we can just blow right through and be like, easy, one word answer. Next one. Or some of them we can really get into. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Yeah. What if we challenged ourselves to answer everything with one word? Yeah. You know what's crazy? I can't remember if Ian or Damien was on the show with no name more. I was only on there like three or four times, tops, tippy tops. But how many? I was, was only on there like three or four times, tops or tippy tops. You guys are probably around <laughs> the same number. What? That was. I, I gotta say, 
coming into like sorry this is a side note go, go, coming go. into like from games to get to do like pit stuff show with no name was always like the rarest treat because it was just so fun like i loved the quick little segments i loved just how like boom 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 the show was and it was just like plug and play it was modular and i could plug in and just totally yeah. be a part of it it was i don't know it was fun so yeah. i'm excited for this it is really it fun, yeah. Fun it's like it's we always we have a lot of shows like that where it's like we had a lot of fun doing them, but they just not everyone loved them. They didn't get the views that we were hoping. But <coughs> Damien Shane show cough 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 Damien Shane show. <laughs> well, nature show. <coughs> First question: Are you guys ready? Yeah. This is from at phase butt hair. Mm. Asks oh. what has been the weirdest thing you have done in quarantine. So for me, it's probably bleaching my hair or downloading Just Dance to. Uh, exercise, but I realize since you're only holding a controller in one arm, one arm gets slightly stronger than the other arm. So then mm. I stopped. You're like that dude from Lady in the Water, which only eight people saw. There you go. Or you're like here. a quagmire in that one yeah. oh, part. Yeah, the fap arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Single guys be leaving quarantine like. Probably for me, the two weirdest things have been um, just filming for Smosh, honestly, trying to figure out like, I'm not the cleanest person. I don't know what my deal is because when I'm in a public space, I'm like, everything needs to be orderly and fine. And then when I'm home, I'm like, I'm the trash man. So like, <laughs> it's very difficult like setting up shooting spaces. So I'm very like specific about my angles and stuff. I've never done anything like that before. I didn't do Vine. I was not a TikTok guy. Like that's been really hard. And then also for voiceover, um, during this quarantine, so many things are going to home studios, which I do not have. My closet is not really set up so that it could work. And even my outdoor balcony, like there's car traffic outside, so I can't use it. So I'm completely redoing my downstairs closet um, oh. which, to like be a little studio space, which uh, Mark, my roommate, has immediately was like, oh, yeah, totally do it. So I'm do really you want to steal some of my soundproofing that I don't use? Wait, legitimately? Yes, that will save Isn't me a crap like ton of time and money. Isn't that like hard glued to the walls? Like if I'll you take your wall. off, there's going to be like pieces yeah. left. Don't Ian tell him that. Just... Courtney, you just ruined a really good thing for me. I could have had a ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a ceiling. Um, that's awesome that you're getting into the rap game. Thanks, man. <laughs> I do. I am dressed for it right now a little bit. That's funny. Headphones with the hoodie over it. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm pre-Malone. I like this. I'm going to do this. Do that. Yeah, join us, guys. Ian, can I have that soundproofing? Um, if you could find a way to take off <laughs> all the freaking spray-on adhesive that was used to put those uh Spray-on adhesive on. barely works. I'm shocked it's still up. Anyway. Uh, Shane, what's the weirdest thing you've Shane done? Oh, wait, Ian, weird. do you have one? <laughs> Dude, Courtney, you look so ridiculous. What do you mean? Dude, I look great. You look I like, look so you look like Katamari Damacy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I look adorable. Moving on. All right, yeah. um, the weirdest thing I've done. Uh, so my neighborhood has now taken it upon themselves. Every time the clock strikes eight o'clock at night, everyone goes like outside of their house and starts like cheering. Like, whoa, uh, whoa. was that that video? Yeah, you sent us that, right? Yeah, yeah, I sent you guys a video. Yeah, so I found out like what it is. It's people showing like solidarity for like medical workers and other essential service people. So everyone like goes out onto their like balconies and just like starts like shouting and like cheering and like banging pots and stuff. That's cool. Aww. So so that now I really fun. It is kind of fun. Are they doing it everyone, because because there are uh, health workers and uh, emergency workers nearby? That's or what are they just doing it no. out into the to the void? Just out hoping into the void. somewhere out there they hear it. Yeah, I'm wondering I think so. because last night my neighbors were howling uh -huh. like like coyotes was it at howling. eight o'clock i don't remember what time it was at are your I neighbors think what you coyotes? guys gotta do what you guys gotta do yeah. in your individual places at eight o'clock you guys gotta start doing it yeah try to try to get everyone going Okay. That's what I do to LAPD when they're nearby. I bang pots and pans and bark at them, and they love it. Well, that's how you get rid of bears. So <laughs> yeah, treat paramedics and cops like bears. They yeah. love it. Oh my okay. god! Yo, yo, come on! That's really hey funny. bear. Yo, hey bear. Yo, <laughs> yo, hey. hey. <laughs> Is anybody else just watching Kevin? By the way, this has been delightful. Oh, Kevin, yeah. in Google Hangout. I can't see him. What? For those, for those listening on the pod OBS. and watching, uh, you know, we see each other and talk to each other through Google Hangouts. And Kevin 
is in there to make sure everything's going all right. So we just see him watching and enjoying the show. He's our Jan Brady. Aww. Yeah. I, everyone's frozen except for when and they talk. everybody froze so, for a second. So what? Kevin is just, yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. I have the worst internet of us all, and I can see you crystal clear. I can see your pores. I can oh. tell you which of you need to exfoliate. I can see your aura. I can see you. Ooh, that's cute. Shane, what's the weirdest thing you've done in quarantine, my guy? Um, I Non-Smosh related, uh, I don't know. Um, probably, honestly, when I work out, I have such a small apartment. I mean, really, like, over here is, like, my whole apartment, right? So when I work out, I have to kind of, like, move furniture and I set up my own little workout space. But because the lighting is so bad in my apartment, I have my blinds pretty much open. So people walking past can just see me shirtless, just like working out or like yeah. a jumping rope or whatever. Just wow. all right. looking insane. Um, yeah. Um, From now on, Shane, whenever somebody sees you and you lock eyes with them, just whisper, welcome to the gun show. And they won't hear you because you're inside. But it's unless, more for you. Unless more they're for you. a paramedic <laughs> or a firefighter or a cop, and then I immediately grab my pants and start yelling. Get out of here! Now get out! Uh, but sm- yeah. Smosh related, um, we had to shoot that Animal Crossing video. And for that, I had to go to the park um, and I had to shoot a scene where I'm running away from bees. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, luckily the park was... Which was shocking. The park was rather empty. Oh, but good. still, still, I had to set up a camera and then kind of move, be away from my camera as I'm running around just yelling that there's <laughs> bees. And I'm like, if there's people nearby, this is a problem because people are going to think, oh, if there's one person running, swatting at the air saying bees, bees, everyone else is going to run too. So I was like, this is a real challenge. Yeah. But I got away with it. It was fine. Um and then I had some other scenes that I had to shoot where it's just me talking to the camera, just being stupid. And of course, a father and his like five-year-old son come and decide to play catch right next to where I'm filming. And Ugh. I was just like, come on, like, why'd you do this? I have to say shit and fuck in this. Like, I just felt, I just feel like a psycho filming myself out in public, especially I don't if I don't like have doing anyone stuff else like with that. Me. I don't like doing stuff like that at all. Well, like... That and like I once very briefly was going to work with a different YouTube channel like seven years ago and they wanted to become like a prank channel where they're like, just start saying uh, things to people in a in the mall. And I'm like, I will never do that. Uh, I will I never. It I makes literally me feel cannot. so uncomfortable. I have so much respect for Eric Andre and people like that who can just <laughs> do that. But I, I feel like I feel like I somewhat have that ability. I would never I'm never trying to be aggressive or yelling someone in some, something in someone's face. But like I'm definitely able to just. Pretend that people aren't there and be crazy. That's yeah. great. I despite, wish I could. That's a super. Despite power. making building my whole life around making an ass out of myself in front of millions of people online, I have a lot of trouble doing that out in public. Really? Like and like inconveniencing people or bothering yeah. people or like yeah. being weird out in public. I don't know. Like, I it's get hard like a thrill. It's so hard for me. <laughs> I feel like I get <laughs> a thrill out of it because it's like I'm a lot of these people I'm never gonna see again. Like who gives they don't I don't care about what they think of me. I don't care. I don't think anything of them. They could scream in front of me and I'll be like, nice. But so, so Courtney, care. you're saying you could film scenes where it's isolated where you are just doing your bit yeah. within itself. I'm also saying like people who go up and f- with people. On yeah, no, the that's what I said. That's what I said from the get go. I can't do yeah. yelling. Oh, in that's what we're space. more talking about. I think. No, I, I, I disclaim that like right off. Oh, of that got it. Saying that like I got could it. never be the person yelling in people's face or, or like that's 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 invasive and like that's got it. But if I'm yeah. just like break dancing in the middle of a mall, you know, like or or uh, like you can you can be in your own or room. like or just gently caress and kiss a mannequin. I'm not saying I've never done that. Right. So I would never say that you didn't do that. Yeah. So that's fine. Well, let me tell you a little something about Bombas. They create just great socks. I'm wearing them right now. They're, They're super comfy. I've been wearing Bombas socks for well over a year. They've literally rethought every little detail of the socks we wear to make them way more comfortable. They help give back to the most vulnerable members of the community because every pair of socks that you purchase, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. The generosity of Bombas customers has allowed them to donate over 34 million pairs of socks and counting. 
and the impact is more powerful than ever. To those experiencing homelessness, these socks represent the dignity of putting on clean clothes, a small comfort that's especially important right now. So don't forget, you give a pair when you buy a pair. And you can get 20% off your first purchase at bombas.com slash smosh. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash smosh for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash smosh. Y'all on that wireless earbud game? I love me some wireless earbuds. If you're not on that, you should get on that. But before you go spending you should look into Raycon because Raycon is selling for like half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as amazing as all those top audio brands you know. In fact, their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds are the best ones yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are also comfortable. They're perfect for on the go listening or taking phone calls. And now is the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash smosh. That's buyraycon.com slash smosh for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash smosh. They were already cheap and now they're gonna be cheaper. So this is another uh, stay at home type question from at Uncomfy Alley and she asks, have you, or they ask, have you been washing your clothes at all or are you just living in the same shirts and pants? Mm, That's a good I question. I will say I'm definitely reusing things a little bit more than I would. I've worn this hoodie a couple times and hoodies, I know same. you can do it, but there's not like a shirt under there. Um, same with like comfy PJ pants, but everything else has been laundry as usual. Mm. Um, yeah. I gotta have some normalcy, right? Yeah, all the undergarments that I wear are, uh, are washed yeah. and clean. But but as far as like PJ pants, uh PJ pants, uh sweaters, yeah, I reuse those. Mm-hmm. I would I would say I'm I'm just about I'm almost as hygienic as I was uh before the fall of mankind. Uh, <laughs> uh but that happened way before the coronavirus did. Yeah. But I guess I probably shower less. I probably shower a little bit less. And Stick. my house is I leave I leave things like out on tables longer because I'm like, well, nobody's going to come to my house. So <laughs> who cares? My routine is uh, very unchanged. Um, I realize like keeping things organized and clean and showering and, and cleaning my clothes is very much something I do for myself. Uh, I. I like I'll get up. My system's pretty bad right now. Um, I'll get up, I'll shower, get ready to like do stuff like this, like the pod, whatever. But then I'll end up working out later. And so I will be going through two pairs of underwear a day. Yeah. Because that's not good. You know, I'll rewear like a shirt, but sure. but for the most part, I'm my my routine is very much the same as before. I weirdly in high school, I used to have such a weird thing with how my clothes fit me. Like even if I tried on a pair of shorts in the morning, I'd throw them in the laundry and wash them and dry them again because I felt they like weren't, they weren't that fresh. Fit. Yeah, they weren't like tight or that fit. So weird. But nowadays, like I mean, especially during the quarantine, like I'll I'll have a pair of like Nike leggings that I'll I ran and worked out in. I will set them aside and be like. I barely use them. I'm going to use them again tomorrow. It's just me. And like same with like a sports bra. I'll like wear it for two days if I decide not to shower. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of, girls are gross, dude. Gr- dude, you should write another should, song about You should write a song about yeah. that. I definitely should. Oh, and dude, dude, Tommy made that Animal Crossing remix of it. So good. So, yeah. good. so good. I haven't seen that. TikToks with it. Uh, you know, he made so KK black. Sliders, Girls Are Gross. Me, <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah. Can I something weird? I realize I don't wear sweatpants or any sort of comfort clothing when I'm home. If I'm by myself oh, all day, dog. I still put on jeans. I still put on this. I put on a plaid shirt, jeans, like belt. I'm wearing I, my I, high school I, gym shorts right now. You're wearing a belt? Yeah. I, see. I get fully dressed. Shane, like, you gotta get, get on the comfort you should, train. You should try getting just really doughy as a person, and then you don't really have a choice. 
Because, like, I, mean, I don't know, you're very, like, trim and fit. I feel like you are fitting into clothes exactly as the designer intended for the model in the Coles catalog. Like, when you got a little extra pudge pudge around the middle, these pants are like, oh, thank God, this is all I wanted in my day, in my life. I needed this. Because then every other type of pants is like an aggressive assault on your waistline. And they're like, how long can you stand us digging in? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> the literal battle of the bulge. <laughs> oh, that's right. I've been wearing my a lot ween of is just pants too around. big. I mm-hmm. never wear sweatpants. I never. Do you just not like them? Yeah, I don't really like loose fitting clothing. I like, and not necessarily like my pants are, aren't necessarily tight, but I just don't like soft materials on my legs. I like there to feel like there's a little element of protection. Structure. Mm. You know? Yeah. I don't know like, why. Like, like if a bee landed on me, I'd have a, a layer. That you have to be help. prepared but for battle at all times. Have you guys, exactly. have you guys you, worn? I think I think Damien's worn it. Uh, have you guys worn the the YouTube robe that like at home? Oh yeah, giant I have robes. worn that occasionally, but not too much. It's an interesting thing. It's not like it's it's a robe that they mixed with like a comforter on your bed. So it's yeah. very mm-hmm. specific. You're like, is it cold as hell? And I'm not going to see people, but I'm only cold up here. Cool, then great, I will wear this. Otherwise it's like, let's wear a blanket. But thanks yeah. YouTube for giving us the thing. Yeah, I gave it to my sister. She's been using it a lot. I wore it I wore it to Iceland and I wore it like in the airports really? and on the plane. I, I saw that and photo. I got so freaking sweaty. But like, dude, I got, I got like legit compliments at the airport. People being like, that's a sick robe. I was like, cool. <laughs> like, cool was it, was it so like, that's moist. a sick robe or was it like, huh? <laughs> Sick robe, dude. No, I definitely got some like weird looks and people were trying to like figure out what the f*** it was. Cause you don't oh ever see God. people just rocking a robe except for Olivia, like out in public. True. Yeah, it's an Olivia move. That's Wait, why it, I felt comfortable to do it. If Olivia's done it, then I feel like I have the confidence to do it. And the fans, I think the, the listeners actually know what we're talking about. Cause we made that TikTok with the yeah, robes. Yeah, so we're all in the robes, yeah. yeah with really the Dolce funny. Vita. Yeah, yeah that song time. is- I feel like that's like our song. Dolce Vita is like our song, you know? Like, yeah, song. no one's ever Guys, done it before. I made my first TikTok on my own account. Dude, I, I saw, did. holy smokes. Well, I felt so silly because I made it thinking I would be able to save it to my phone, send it along and make it for Smosh. It, like that's clearly a Smosh TikTok. Mm-hmm. And then that's not a thing you can do in TikTok. You can't save your drafts, you have to publish. And even if you publish privately, it puts your tag on it. So I, yeah. you know, we kept trying to find ways to skirt around it. And eventually I was like, can I just make a different TikTok later? And who runs our social was just like, you know what? This was meant to be your first TikTok. This is your <laughs> account, you do it. And I was like, okay. And so, yeah. Know. TikTok's weird with the, with the saving and stuff. It's like anyone can save anyone's TikTok, but God forbid you save your own. You can't do it. What? I get it, though, because they want you to post on their platform because they have there's the Snapchat problem, right? Because everybody uses Snapchat for the filters. And then they I don't know a single person who's still on Snapchat, myself included. You take those filters and you post them elsewhere. And that's what TikTok's doing. They're like, nope, none of that, please. Yeah, the watermark was it's a really smart, like marketing business move to be like, yeah, save our stuff. Put it wherever you want. Put our watermarks on it, and yeah. But I mean, it also like helps promote that person as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, it's a double-edged yeah. sword. Yeah. yeah. The, the watermark is genius. It is really good. Okay, are you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna keep it on this at-home stuff for a little bit longer. Uh, so at lovers. Larson asks, explain the difference of making videos in your separate homes than in being the studio. So uh, it's obviously harder. So normally uh, the only way to make these sh- these like sketches work is we'll shoot like six in one week. Um, and then that's all it's so it's like a batch shoot. Uh, and now we're shooting like one a week. Like we're all given our own assignments and like, okay, you're going to shoot this scene. You're going to shoot this scene. You're going to shoot this scene. And you kind of get the day to like shoot it and then mm-hmm. we'll come back. So like we haven't been doing like a batch shoot and said, we've just been kind of mm-hmm. shooting as we go. So that's like the big difference for me. Definitely. But it's like, it's like you, I mean, we're able to get more stuff done in a short amount of time because we're all shooting our own thing. Like we're not all waiting around for like one person to shoot a thing. Then, So I think for me, the big thing is like, I, everybody's good at a lot of different things. And I think Smosh is this really interesting space where 
so many people are good at all the things. Like Courtney, for example, you can write, you can direct, you're funny as hell in acting like with scripted and you're funny as hell in unscripted. You've got all the four things. I feel like I can do the acting stuff. I really enjoy the writing stuff. The directing thing, not built in. So having to figure out camera angles and figuring out what works and there's like a line and there's a rule in filming where you can't cross this 180 degree line. It just doesn't, it just doesn't click. It doesn't work. So it's, it's a lot more like effortful now not having all those like experts there to like take care of everything for you. But I do think the one major benefit is, um, because we're filming things weekly, we can finally be more timely with our content. Sometimes when these trends are happening, we we miss them. We're like, well, by the time we film it in a couple of weeks, then edit it, we'll get it out two months after the trend yeah. has happened. We can't we're do it. We're able to be more topical. Yeah. 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 Now we're like quarantine. Sure. Let's do it. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I agree. I definitely like I miss how things were because it was nice when you could just like I appreciate the compliment, Damien. It's really sweet, I think. But I feel it's so nice when you can just, okay, I'm just going to focus on acting. And like, that's my thing that I'm going to do today. We're definitely learning a lot. I mean, I used to do this all the time when I was in like middle school and high school, making those silly videos in my room. Yeah. Um, You're in your but element. I'm a little bit, but I'm rusty. And I mean, now we're getting sent uh, equipment to us now so that we can make things look a little better and make things easier for the editors and stuff. I think I just mostly miss, there's just so many moments that we have on set. We're just like having fun and enjoying it together. And I think that's like what I miss most is just like being in the same room with you guys. Oh, my yeah. homie lonely. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a very technically savvy person. So that's been a huge adjustment for me because before on set, yeah, I just had to act. I literally got to go to set, stand in front of the camera, sound, you know, everything would get set up mm -hmm. before we were even there. They would do their job, then we'd come and do our job, you know, like it was that combo. Whereas now, like I'm, uh, we're filming a, I'm filming a big sketch next week. Um, and yeah, I have, we're playing director, sound, camera, lighting like i have to fill all those departments that i know nothing about yeah. um and it's it's interesting i think the benefit for me is my apartment is so small i'm given so few options that the decisions are easy because i'm kind of like well this corner is the only place where i have lighting uh mm -hmm. so i guess i'm shooting here um but yeah it's trippy and there's it's small things that i i get worried about like Oh, how long should I roll for before I should cut again or whatever? Like it's the or what, what you yeah. said, the 180 degree line, you know, stuff like yeah. that. That I'm just like, oh, I need to keep all these small things in mind. Yeah, while I'm just lines trying are to hard. be funny. Eye line stuff is hard. Like when I had to film the that Animal Crossing scene where I'm in my bed, like talking to a character. I mm -hmm. it totally like they did their best, but like you can tell I'm looking way above the raccoon. <laughs> sure. Yeah. The same thing happened with the ones where I'm like talking to that text bubble. It was like what we landed on was like, well, look down at the text bubble first, but then you can just sort of talk out to the world. And I was like, OK, so I literally yeah. stopped one being like, whoa, what do you mean? I don't know. the, uh, uh, And I like I didn't even just pick a spot. Mm, I guess like, it, it didn't look like it suffered. The concept suffered too bad. But I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's tricky. All right. Yeah, ready, for the, ready for the next one game? Yeah, man. OK. So. All right. Let's just this will be a quick one. Um, mm. What's what's been your go to quarantine binge show? That's from at Mads J O two. Love Island. If you guys oh, don't no know. Way. Yes. That's awesome. So, Love Island is a British reality TV show. And I think I started on <laughs> I started on the most recent season, which is sort of an outlier because like everyone is really polite and there's no drama. But I'm on season five now, the previous one. And uh, basically, it's a reality show where it's like if you're interested in accents and voiceover and learning that, it's a flipping gold mine. <laughs> it's absolutely it's like wonderful. all of the UK smashed together, right? You need subtitles. Like you literally do. You speak English, but you don't speak that English. Um, so, but it's just like five sexy guys, five sexy girls on an island. Will they find love or will they fight about it? And it's like, that's, it's oh so self-aware. It is like Bachelor times 10. And it's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's trashy reality TV shows, but yep. it knows. I've and heard great like, things about Love Yeah, Island. everyone's it's talking so about good. it. It's everyone so loves good. it. 
It's That's all so on funny. Hulu and it's terrible, but it's totally oh, it's on Hulu. Hell yes. yeah! I'm, Season I'm gonna, six is the one I started with. Oh, so I, I might check it out. Yeah, I'm me gonna watch Ian, it. Ian, me and Ian and Sarah have been chatting, even though we've all finished watching. it. I haven't we've finished been, it. Oh, you haven't finished it, but no. uh, Love is Blind. On I Netflix. need to start. Ugh. You gotta. I think it's, you would really like that oh, one, Ian. and you too. God, I haven't started it. It's yeah. so it's so frustrating. Like like yeah. li- literally. I went in being like, these all seem like kind of normal people. And, and I'm, I think I'm at episode seven or eight. And I'm now convinced that aside from uh, one woman, all mm-hmm. of the women are crazy. Like yeah, they dude. are psychopaths. Like they all. It's wild. Suck. Well, you have to think about the type of person who sends an audition yeah. tape for a reality show, right? Yeah. Your sample size is psychos from the start. And then producers are going to look through those audition tapes and go, who is the craziest? This one isn't so much like, I'm sure like maybe there is some element of like just trying to get clout, but like this isn't like you can't really win. I mean, there's a bunch of different couples trying to find their husband and there are people like I won't I won't spoil anything, but like it's cool because it's like it's it's not all about one person, which I like because it's like everyone's just trying to do well in their own lane. But yeah, but there's some frustrating ass characters, dude. What a hell of a first season, dude. I, yeah, I think I'm. I think I finished episode seven. I think there's ten episodes. Mm-hmm. Basically, the the whole gist of the show is that um, everyone's put in these pods and they can't see the other person, and they go on all these dates with all these different people, and then they have to decide if they want to propose to one of the people. And then if that person they propose to says yes, then they when, meet. Then they finally meet and then, and then they, they go, can walk away or stay. That's insane. Yeah. And, then and then they go they, and then yeah. from there. Then they have like two weeks that they get to. Okay, so they, they've seen each other. And if they stay like together, then they go to this island off Mexico and they're on vacation for two weeks. Right. And then then they have like cuz from the moment they get engaged and they are going to get married in a month and i think that they have a Normal. rule where you can't walk away in in that month you have to wait until the wedding and that's when you decide yes or no Holy there crap. was a person that walked away spoilers <laughs> i don't i oh yeah 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 no you're right no you're right that one was impossible okay i won't smile anymore but that it's a really good show shane why are you laughing i i'm just imagining a show where it's all stevie wonder and different wigs what <laughs> called love, oh, is, love blind, is blind shane oh my god but shane we've been there video he we've been over this he wasn't, like, fully blind? stevie wonder isn't blind he could see i mean that's a well edited youtube video i don't know is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, it's real it's real so i was i binged the rest of bojack horseman because i think i stopped oh, around buddy. like i think i stopped around like season four and a half mm-hmm. 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 So that's one of those shows and so I was like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish this. And it's such a great show. But like there is one part where they they talk about the fact that like, yeah, in television shows, there there aren't happy endings. Like there has to be drama because that's what mm-hmm. keeps the show going. But holy damn, is that that it's a, just depressing. Just a, yeah, just but I do. Show. I do love when a, sh- a silly show can get dark and real like that. I do like appreciate shows like that for sure. But I, I've been I've avoided that show because whenever people watch it, they're like, yeah, I went through definitely a little bit of a crisis watching the show. Or yeah, I had oh, like a geez. week where I was like, oh, I've heard Bojack Horseman. Especially for us in the entertainment industry, it's going to like <laughs> it'll make give you, think you a lot. Give you a week where you are literally in your head depressed. Yeah, and I, I was had, like, I, I don't know if I'm down episodes. for that. I couldn't. I got. I watched a couple episodes and I was like, meh, and I stopped. I wasn't just, <laughs> watching BoJack is kind of a red pill or blue pill situation. It's like, do you just want to keep being happy or do you want to have a mirror held up to you? Oh my god! I think if you, I don't know, like. I, I never had like a crisis moment watching the show. I think it's like some people that maybe haven't done enough self-reflection. Maybe it revealed something about them, but it's an incredible show. Like there, it's some of the best television I've ever watched. Mm. Uh, they have one episode called Free Churro where it's literally just Bojack, the horse man, uh, doing a monologue for the entire episode. It's the only show that's made that like an episode is ended and I've and I'm laughing but also crying. I guess I can't help but like apply what I'm watching to myself. How would I react or how do I feel about that? Like I can't 
I think that's also what a lot of like there's TV that's supposed to be mindless that you can have on in the background like yeah. Love Island. But then there's <laughs> other stuff that's like, you know, it has a message or it has a little bit of something to make you think. It's I think that's a good thing in general. Yeah. If you if you walk away from something a little bit better for the experience, you know. Shane, what's your show? Well, besides Tiger King, which I obviously right. uh, everybody watched. Yeah, um, dude. Besides that, I haven't been watching much TV uh, because I've been so addicted to Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. um, and I try to watch TV while I play a video game and it doesn't, I just, I'm. Uh, there's no point. I don't oh, catch any of the show. Oh, there's nothing better in the world. That's I don't catch any of the show. I cannot, I, I yeah. it's just completely blocked I'm a single, out. I'm a single track person. I, I am, well. I am wow. too. And I go through my cycle, right? I, I go through a phase where I play a ton of video games, play it nonstop. Then I go through a phase where I'm watching TV shows and movies, and then I go through a phase where I'm reading books, and I'm rarely doing two at the same time. Yeah. Um, and so I'm in a video game phase right now, and I really oh, yeah. cannot stop. Dude, I will say, speaking of the Tiger King thing, there's this YouTuber that I've been watching called Primink, which I really, I've been binging, binging a lot of YouTube for sure during mm -hmm. this time. But um, he, 11 months ago, because basically what his channel is, is he, he covers not so much, he's not a drama channel, but he'll cover all these controversies that have happened on the internet. Like, but he'll kind of tell the story as if it was like this ancient legend that happened a long time ago, <laughs> except for he has all the footage, all the screenshots, like he does the work. He's got the and receipts. He literally, and he, but he's a really like sweet young guy. What's his name? Primink, P-R-I-M-I-N-K. Uh -huh, and 11 months ago, he was like the animal rights man who ends up in a like, I don't I can't I don't uh, explain the show. But yeah. he literally a year ago did a thing on on the Tiger King. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. The That's YouTuber awesome. who ran for president and hired a hitman. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I remember I remember seeing Tiger King on like John Oliver's show. Right. Yeah. Like he's he's been he's, he's been, been around. around. I, you know, I have I have seen this guy's YouTube channel. It's really good. I recommend you guys all check it out. Like you can binge his stuff for hours. Sorry to the video game and TV thing. I'm curious if anybody else is out there that like can do both at the same time and enjoys that because sometimes I'm a huge overthinker. Sometimes even if I'm just doing one thing, like watching a show, my mind will still be like this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing. Mm -hmm. So like doing a TV show and a video game at the same time is like noise canceling headphones for my life. It's like both, <laughs> both tracks are finally occupied. Holy crap! This feels good. Mm -hmm. So playing Animal Crossing our... while watching Love Island is just the best experience of oh, life. Some of our some of our fun. coworkers also do that. Nancy was saying she plays Animal Crossing while also watching stuff. Having so, yeah, having yeah. like a garbage TV show that you don't have to pay attention to and just tune into mm -hmm. while playing a very chill, lax game like Animal Crossing or Minecraft totally mm -hmm. makes sense. I know I that I have a hard time with that. like just straight up silence in my apartment, especially now. It's like just reminding me how by myself I am. Aww. So having, just having YouTube a YouTube channel, like I let Drew Gooden or Danny Gonzalez just autoplay mm -hmm. while you I'm should like You I'm should get stuff. a speaker out and just play like audio of a cafeteria in your <gasps> in your place. That sounds so nice. Or like a cocktail party. Yeah, oh. you should do that. I'm sure there's like, I'm sure there's like a, a, a fo Foley of, of a, yeah, of a I mean, that's essentially kind of like <laughs> How in, uh, isn't it in Korea where they just footage mukbang? of people just eating lunch? Yeah. Oh, Not yeah, necessarily mukbang. even a mukbang, just people but, literally eating yeah. like a regular lunch. People is a, do yeah, it's, enjoy that. It's super popular a there. Lot. Those are some good stuff to watch though. Wait, is anyone else watching anything else? Because Love Island wore me the frick out. So I was like, I was, or that's why I was. Blind, or? Sorry, yeah, Love is Blind war, it was like wearing me out, it was making me like hate humanity. So I had to like flop between that, mm -hmm. Bojack. Oh, Detroiters. Oh my God. What's that? Uh, it's that's incredible. Tim yeah, it's Show. Tim Robinson's. Detroit. It had two seasons on Comedy Central. I think you should leave, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the guy that made Detroit I Think You Should Leave. He made a sitcom, or not really a sitcom, but it's like a scripted, scripted show. Um, about like him and a friend like running an advertising agency in Detroit or Detroit. Hmm. I don't know how you guys say it. What are the, what's the other way to say it? Well, some people say Detroit and some people say Detroit. Detroit? Detroit. I've never heard I don't know say if I've Detroit. heard that ever. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> it's such a funny show because it's 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 really funny, but then it also has like a lot of heart. And I know that's like what everyone says about every show, but like but it's it's really great. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So 
Highly Sorry. recommend if you can find a way to watch it. Sorry, for, for those for those this of you is what I'm uh, just right listening, now. Courtney is um, adjusting her plants. I was. <laughs> it has like you know when it continues to grow and sprout, it'll have like a little dead little like place where I like yeah from. It I was, was doing that right now. I was peeling was... those off, um, dude. It's gotten so long. He was such a little guy when I first got him. Okay, next question. Yeah, yeah, Detroiters. Let's talk about this. <laughs> My plant. La 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 la. La la um, lulu. So this is the last kind of like it's not serious, but it's. I think it's a really good question. I love that. I, that I love very much. I love this question very much. Um, <laughs> it's from at. <laughs> It's from at Gumballman101, which we say 10-1 when we have to pee on set. Ha, ha, mm. ha. Um, the question is, do you have any books you read when you were you? Oh, sorry. Do you have any books you read when you were younger that you think have shaped you as a person? They don't have to be serious or adult books. Nope. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no. No. Next question. So in high school, I started, I was basically, I sat alone uh, for the first few months of freshman year because all my friends went to different high schools. So I'd basically either sit, yeah, I'd pretty much, I started in the bathroom, but I was like, no, I can't eat lunch in the bathroom every day. So then I went, so then I moved, yeah, exactly. So then I moved to the library where that's, I found uh, the young adult section and I would just find a book and literally judged a book by its cover. If the cover looked interesting to me, I would take it home and I'd read it or read it at lunch. Because freshman year, I was still getting bullied a little bit. There was that series, Pretty Little Liars. And Mm -hmm. it's very, very, very different from the show. But it basically gave me this new confidence because a lot of these girls in that book or in the show are just acting a certain way just to assert their dominance. Or just like if you acted confident and and all this stuff like that you would you were treated better. And like, there's a character named Allie. And I was like, where's your Allie, Courtney? And I would like find like where my confidence was. And it's like, I don't care what these people are saying about me. Mm. And I just felt I had such a, a better attitude instead of when people were bullying me or, or spreading rumors about me online. Instead of getting sad and like going into my d- dark hole and just crying or whatever, I I decided to like within myself just fight back be like no like it it just taught me how to be a bitchy high school girl at least on the inside (laughs) so that on the outside it showed through and i think i eventually became like got befriended by those girls that were bullying me but yeah that book definitely taught me to how to be a confident young woman very much so i don't know if there's a specific book as much as just reading in general uh shaped a lot of my personality i hated reading when i was young because it was very like a forced thing like Mm -hmm. you have to read a chapter a night or you have to do this or whatever and so i hated it because it was a chore um and then same it was around when i was 16 and i was you know homeschooled because i was auditioning and stuff and i The homeschooling stuff was so minimal and honestly like uh, there was periods of time where i was essentially just not in school because the curriculum just wasn't great and Mm -hmm. so i started realizing i'm like if i don't start reading books or doing something i'm not gonna be learning anything right now and so i just started reading a ton and i just started picking i didn't know where to go so i just kind of picked classics because i was like well apparently these are good it's so different when you read on your own accord as opposed Mm -hmm. to it being assigned to you in a reading assignment you're given things to look for and they might be things that you don't care about be like you know like in in catcher in the rye what is the theme to uh the Mm -hmm. the story what is holden caulfield's uh greatest fear whatever and you're not that's uh, the things that on your own time you wouldn't be looking for and you wouldn't Mm -hmm. care about you'd be thinking oh how does this relate to me oh yeah what does this book mean to me and then it takes such a different form so there's a ton of books i mean that i that i loved and uh continue to shape me i think i don't think there's a single book i read even if i hate it or even if it's very insignificant it there's something there's even a sentence sure. in it that's presented that changes my thinking in some way or another i think if anything it just made me open-minded because every book cool. will surprise you in some way and you'll feel dumb in some way that you're like oh i didn't know that things were like that and yeah. so you're left now going oh I'm not going to assume things. I, I'm i always going to be looking for knowledge mm-hmm. that I don't have. Let's nice. say that that's like a lot with like the Kite Runner. That book really taught me a lot about life and just yeah. how people don't just have a couple of bad things that happen in their lives. Like your entire life can be a struggle. Mm-hmm. And, and 
it continues and Kite it's crazy. Is amazing. Yeah, that that book made me cry so hard. Ian, you're deep in thought. You're very deep in thought. Am I? They're like mm-hmm. very pensive. Uh, no, I because <laughs> I know Damien. Jo- I know Damien was joking when he was like, "No, no book has nope. influenced me." But like straight up, I I don't think I don't think I had a book that I read as a kid that that inspired me to That's be okay. who I am today. I don't know. Like I I don't feel like I was really influenced by a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like. Oh, hell yeah. Garbage truck, man. Take away my trash. Thank you. Good job. Bing, pots and pans. Thank you. Bark at him. Did um, he literally, did he wave to you? No. I don't even know if he saw me. But you waved to him. That's really yeah. sweet. I'm just trying to give him love, you know, central services. I'm trying to think, like, what what things did I, like, read or watch as a kid that influenced me? I guess, like, really just, like, watching comedy, I think, mm-hmm. probably made me realize what I found funny. And that's about it. Like, I didn't ever apply any sort of, like, life lessons from Harry Potter into Mm -hmm. my life. Like, I would never go, like, ooh, what would Hermione do in this situation? (laughs) That's a mistake. That's a mistake. I do that before Uh, I do anything. Yeah. (laughs) So WWHD, what would Hermione do? I was in the same sort of place that Shane was in, where every book in school felt like it was an assignment. Yeah. And Fahrenheit 451, I could not do it, bro. Hate it. Yeah. Do not like but then it. I read Wait. that book on my own and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. See, maybe if I went back, there are some books like that I did enjoy in school. But and I think it's like, especially with something like Fahrenheit 451, which I admit I've never read. Those kinds of books, like you at least need a little bit of life experience. Mm-hmm. Like, to, oh, yeah. To, to understand yeah. the context of like tyranny. I had a really hard time with that book specifically for that reason. And that I do not, the author Ray Bradbury, I can acknowledge that his work is well done. I am not a Ray Bradbury fan at all. And there would be all these units in school every year where it's like, now we're doing this Ray Bradbury book. And it was such a struggle because it wasn't like, how do you feel about this book? What do you think about this book? It was, why is this book so damn great? And I'd have to be like, it's not, but okay, let me think about what you (laughs) want me to say. And so it just made me good at taking the tests. I was really good at taking Mm -hmm. the tests, but I didn't believe in it. I, I, sorry, I just hijacked this from you. No, No, go, no, go. I had sort of the same experience with reading in school because when I first learned how to read way uh, like three years ago, no, um, when I was just a super young baby boy, I was like, I was so in love with it. I wanted to read all the time and I would like brag to people that I met just like, I read two books last week and they'd be like, wow, we, that's so cool. But then in my school, we had this thing called the Accelerated Reader Program, the oh, AR program. Too. It Fuck sucks that. because because it makes you take a <laughs> test at the beginning of the year and it gives you your reading level, quote unquote. So so it would be like, uh, you know, Steve, and what is your reading level? Like, well, I'm in the first grade and I've got a third grade reading level. Isn't that great? And they'd be like, that is great. You're very advanced. Take, uh, read, get this many points uh, in a year. So you would have to read books that were worth a certain amount of points, take tests on them, and then earn those points. So they, my friends might need six, seven points for the year. That's one Harry Potter book takes care of that. And then you're done for the year. My reading level that they gave me, they were like, hi, you need 36 points by the end of the year. I'm like, oh, cool. White Fang by Jack London is 11. So let me figure this out. And they so they beat the reading out of you. They don't you don't end up liking it. So it wasn't until way later that I actually enjoyed it again and discovered things like Neil Gaiman, my favorite author, read The Sandman. Mm -hmm. I love uh, George R. R. Martin, uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Um, Yeah. Anything. Anything like fantastical. It, it it wasn't that escape for me until like more modern times. Mm-hmm. I, I will say it's a thing that's nice about college is that there is much more freedom in assignments. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's freedom in, in the types of classes you pick. Like, for instance, I did a class that was entirely graphic novels. So oh, it, was, awesome. it was a class focused entirely on, you know, comic artists really reading that's cool comic yeah it was and i like i'm reading a, a book by chris ware right now which i read one of some of his stuff in that class and it's so good and then more importantly in college you get a lot more freedom with the assignments that you're doing it whereas in high school it's very constricted like you're saying where it's like why is this book so great in college i feel like you have the option of saying that you think it's trash <laughs> you, you're often given for me at least throughout my college experience i was with assignments, you're choosing the topic. Yeah. You are, yeah. you're not, you're not, okay, write an essay about this, about this book. Being like, okay, you read the book, uh, 
write a 10 page paper on anything you choose about that book. Like well, and it could be about a, why it's bad. It could yeah. be why it's about this. It's whatever it means to you, as opposed to them telling you what the book means and yeah. you have to go by those guidelines. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's super important because it's using critical thinking. It's not just somebody telling you like this book is good. And if you disagree, you're wrong. Right. Yeah, I every like time about- there was oh. tests with books and stuff, there was always one critical thinking question. And it was like, so like just skimming past that, which I feel like is the most important part of, mm-hmm. of those things. They should just be like, trivia. Okay. It's now they I don't agree. want it's you to be- think critically, man. Like the schools are just trying to, they're just trying to <laughs> turn you into sheep, man. What I also hated about that specifically was like, And even in college for me, maybe it was just, you know, the kind of classes I was taking, but like a lot of things really need you to have sources to cite, which is understandable. But like they would also often have to come from like scholarly articles, like in, in, you know, scholarly publications and all that stuff. So it's like, all right, so you want me to read this book that's a classic that everybody has already read come up with a brand new idea about it, but yeah. find published articles from scholars who didn't quite get to where I'm getting right now so I can quote what they're saying, which is halfway to my point, and then make one beyond that. Like, I just hated mm-hmm. it. I, I don't think like the way the, literature When it comes to the arts, I don't understand scholarly articles. I don't, I don't understand that for the arts, because the it. arts is all opinion-based. I understand it when it came to scientific classes and psychology and stuff like mm-hmm. that, because it's like, yes, that is how science is supported. Yeah by peer review and everything. But when it comes to reading a book and then having to find a, a, another high up, then you're getting the same opinions. It's because you're yeah. probably else, getting a bunch of white It's because what else are you going to do with an English major? That's, mm. I And I didn't go <laughs> to college, but I think what frustrated me the most was those classes where my teachers were sometimes good teachers, sometimes really bad teachers. And I would be frustrated because I'd be getting forced to read this book that I was not didn't feel like I could relate to or understand or comprehend at all. But then I'd go to the library and find all these amazing books that mm-hmm. like like I really like resonated with. Like I actually read 13 Reasons Why back in like 2014. And like it's obviously people look at that book now and that show and they're like, hey, this actually glorified suicide Mm -hmm. and just like a lot. Luckily, it didn't affect me in that way. But it's like those books, that book speak. uh, I forget the author, but I have it. I actually have it right here. All my I've actually kept all my favorite books that have affected me in um, this bookcase. But nice. I don't know. I feel like that'd be cool if if you could in the if in an English class, maybe in high school or middle school where like you're really trying to find yourself like in the beginning of the, the course taking a quiz on like who you are as a person, what you want in life or what you're unsure of, and then being given books that that would maybe help you or or mm. that would you would resonate with or something. All right, we're going to ans- answer some silly ones and then we're going to get into the shoot too because we're running out of time. Are you guys ready? Are you boys ready? Yes, Yay. rapid fire answer. Yes, go. Okay, Let's okay, okay, do it. Okay. The question is from at undignified. Crunchy or smooth peanut butter? This says a lot about you as a person. Smooth. Smooth. Smooth is nice to spread and stuff, but I don't have a problem with crunchy. Smooth. Smooth. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ian. 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 Ian, real fast. Ian. It depends on the application. I won't. Oh my won't God. Faster than that, either. dude. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Ian. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> Next question. Smooth, I, I guess. I feel Son you. of I a feel bitch. You, yeah. I do. I do enjoy. <laughs> I do enjoy the crunch from time to time. But yeah. If I'm going, I think but I'm if fine I'm, with both. But I'm if I'm picky. going to the supermarket and I'm buying a peanut butter, yes, I will get the smooth. Okay. Okay. Smooth. At Pima Cosmic Bubble. Tops asks, what animal could you beat in hand-to-hand combat? I feel like for me, a dog. You could beat one? <laughs> yeah, that, you have to specify what kind of dog. Like medium or large sized dog. No. Oh, wow. That's a sweet. pit bull is medium sized. <laughs> okay, not one that has the ability to lock its jaw, maybe. A German Shepherd. I think I could have been a fighter. You think you can beat a German uh, Shepherd with your German bare hands? If they have a running, no, 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 listen. If they could have a running start to my arm, sure, I'm f- but if have you start seen in a room, John Wick? In the ring, I have hands, bro. If we're yeah. in the ring, we're like that. I know how to grab a dog and pin it down. Me and my dog Holly used to wrestle all the time. Your dog. I was think not if your dog actually was trying to kill you, 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 you would not say. even come I would close. I would beat a German Shepherd in hand-to-hand combat. I don't care what you say, guys. What's your? What do you think? I, I don't even think at all. <laughs> I, I, I've said this before in the octagon. If I have no clothing on, no weapons, I am losing to almost anything. 
and and I've had this conversation a lot with like my brothers and stuff. Because if you get to larger animals that aren't necessarily even try, even if you're in the ring with a cow, and the cow is not trying to kill you, how do you kill a cow with your bare hands? You don't Choke have to it. beating. Beating in hand-to-hand combat doesn't mean killing. Okay, how do you Sorry, beat it? Shane, how do you beat you, it with your bare you hands? Blow, you blow into the udder. You blow into the udder until it pops. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, I think like when animals, animals are so, they can tap into really trying to kill you. Pick an animal. Unlike Goldfish. Okay, fine. And Goldfish. we learned, we learned that a wombat, a wombat can actually crush your skull with its Kill you butt. with its ass. With its, it's, yeah. it's Animals you. are all Dummy demons. Thing. Um, I could uh, yeah. I could easily beat the hell out of a panda. <laughs> <laughs> they just have you seen animal, that video of the panda animal. reaching through what? the bars and grabbing that guy and ripping his jacket off? What? There's a video of a guy. He's in a denim jacket and he's sitting near some bars where uh, there's a panda behind him. And the panda grabs him and I mean just ragdolls him. Just starts oh. swinging him around from behind the bars. Shane, you're s- and then rips the jacket clean off of his body. What's and your, it's what's like your we recommended forget that they're YouTube bears, like, my guy. Just because yeah, they have a key. They're not bears. They are, they are raccoons. They are the more closely I, related to raccoons. I, and I could also fight a raccoon. I don't want to mess with a raccoon either. You're acting like you're scared if they hear you talking about them that they're going to come after you and actually yes! try and fight you. We're all inside right now. What do you think they're all doing? I was at the park. I saw them all in a cir- circle talking. A squirrel, panda, a look, crow, a panda, a panda a coyote. won't even a panda won't even have sex with another panda to prolong okay, its species. Keep so it's sure as hell not going to fight. They're Hold all cells, Damien. Be careful, Ian. Who would you fight? Manatee. Easy. Oh, I just how you see? I just blow its udder until it explodes and let it suffocate. Wait, you drag it off? You know they're you know they're mammals. Oh, that's right. All right, you're All right. right. They're uh, mammals. Question, Never mind. Question. Hold on. Can last I revise? Question. Can you I revise? You guys are all my... getting beat up. Hold on. I'm going to revise my answer. Destroyed. I'm going to grab. You're so smart. I'm going to dump the manatee in water and keep its head underwater <laughs> until it dies. I there you people, go. please draw these fights. Okay, manatees. Ma- hold on. Hold on. I just want to say manatees, I, I believe, are endangered. Don't go killing manatees. They're, Look, I started with panda, like so. Animal, they're the yeah. cows of the sea. And I love them very much. Do not kill a mantee. So last question. Uh, this one's directed directly at Shane. Yeah. From at Simply Biased. What really is a Monday? Uh, a Monday is all time. We measure all of time through Monday. Uh, it is the circle. <laughs> it is a flat circle. Like Earth. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is the present, the past, and the future. It is Monday. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, now All it's right. time for the shoot, dude. Are shoot, you guys ready? dude. Shoot, dude. Insert the shoot, dude theme song here. Shoot, dude. 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 Okay, so this one is from a guy named Chris. I was working as a waiter, and on this particular night, it wasn't overly busy. There was a couple off to the side, and their waiter is just about to serve them their entree when this woman bursts through the door, makes a beeline straight for the couple's table, points at the girl, looks at the man, and goes, Who the f*** is this? Turns out the very angry woman is the guy's wife. Cursing out the husband, the wife takes out her phone and starts taking pictures of the girl who is trying to hide her face in her hands. The husband jumps up, grabs the phone from the wife, and tries to leave while also just trying to delete the pictures. The wife jumps on his back, trying to get the phone from him. He shakes her off and goes outside. The wife follows him. They're now arguing in the middle of the outside tables. He storms off. She goes after him and just left the girl with a $200 dinner bill. No! In parentheses, Shoot. I don't think we made her pay it. There was a dead silence in the restaurant for a good two minutes before the rest of the customers went back to eating. Definitely an interesting night, to say the least. That's an in- that's an insanely smart way to dine and dash if all three of them I was gonna say, are oh, a unit. Yeah. Oh my god. What if that's all three of them are just friends? Dude. If I was Pretty running genius. that restaurant, I would have made her pay. But it was really? like they didn't even get their entrees yet. They didn't get the food. Oh, uh, if they didn't get the food, if they didn't eat anything, then I yeah. mean, oh, what if she's please. what if she's a homewrecker? Okay, 
She better yeah, what pay. What if she's a homewrecker? Yeah. That's one of those things that... It probably happens that's such a, a lot. That's such a rough... That's such a weird situation to be near because it doesn't sound quite like something where you're... You're telling the staff there, obviously, but what can you do other than watch? You know? Like, what can you yeah. do? Like, Dude, you're just going to yeah. kind of be like, all right, does anyone have a microwave for me to put this popcorn in? It's so <laughs> crazy when you get to watch a moment like that. Like, I, feel I like think we were we were in an airport one time on our way back from like New York or something after like a new front or like some weird event. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a couple just fighting at the restaurant Oof. and we were all looking at it. And we're like, oh, this is weird. And then Shane was just like tired. It was like. If a couple's willing to fight in public, like I'm allowed to watch. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so true. Imagine being a waiter and just seeing all the kinds of weird drama. They see it every day. That's true. Because that does add a lot of like pressure to you as an onlooker. Like what, you now have to pretend like the mac and cheese here is really okay. Like just like continue on your conversation and pretend not to listen. Like, no, you just get to. Also to have the balls to cheat out in public like that. Damn boy. Damn, Damn boy. Shoot, no, that's like, shoot, yeah. dude. shoot dude. Nobody at the restaurant knows either party. Like that's pretty oh, yeah. I yeah. love people watching like very much. And so that makes me feel through like their windows and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just like through the little like blurry glass on those front doors of houses, I just go like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. I look through. And yeah. then you just keep whispering to yourself, people are fascinating. Yeah, I'm like, wow, these people, these family inside is so crazy Ooh, as man. I stand on their doorstep. All right, anyway, thanks, guys, for sure, answering those questions with me. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely like a much more low-key, not exactly as kooky and crazy as a show with no name, but, I, you know, we'll leave that in the past. That was its own thing. So it's all good. I'm glad you brought your kitty out briefly, Damien. Me too. She knows because of streaming, like if I'm talking in this direction and focusing in this direction, if they come over, they're getting picked up. So they almost never come over until I'm done talking. And the second I finish talking, they both come over and want to say hey. So it's really funny. So that was a rare treat. That was a very rare treat. She's such a floofer. Big fat baby. I can't do anything about it. I keep trying. She eats a normal amount. I try to give her exercise. She gets fatter. So Whoa. It's just who she Aww. is. I hey, guess. the body what wants and the body wants. And it's Dude, extra Dude, I wish body. I had a cat. Having a cat would be great at a time like this. It's, I'll just I send know. you a picture of mine and you can just stare at it and say, there's my cat. Can you just mail one of them to me? No. Okay. Well, thanks for being my boys. Thanks for being my boys. Always and forever. Thanks for the Having Fun With My Boys podcast. Um, Come back again next time. And maybe it will be another one, but maybe not because this is the Smosh cast, not the My Boys cast. This is why I don't host every single time because I speak gibberish for most of it. (laughs) 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 I love you boys. And yeah, we're going to keep doing this as long as it takes. Being in our rooms. My rooms are now studios. We are all now rap gods. That's right. I've had to go to the bathroom since the start of this. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell All right. Yeah. Bye All right. bye. Love, Love you guys. guys. Bye. 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 bye.